Cooking isn't just about making food safe to eat, it's about unlocking flavors, aromas, and textures that raw ingredients simply don't have. Think about the crispy crust on freshly baked bread, the golden sear on a steak, or even the roasted notes in your morning coffee. All of those delicious transformations are made possible by one powerful process, the Maillard reaction. Today, we're going to break down what it is, how it works, and why it's the key to some of the most mouth-watering experiences in the kitchen, right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, the Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, and reducing sugars, a type of sugar that's reactive under heat. When food is heated, usually above 280 degrees Fahrenheit or about 140 degrees Celsius, these two components collide, rearrange, and create an incredible range of new molecules. These new molecules are what give browned food its complex flavors and appetizing aromas. To put it simply, the Maillard reaction is nature's flavor factory. Without it, toast would just be warm bread, steak would just taste like boiled meat, and coffee wouldn't have its signature roasted depth. A common mix-up happens here. People often confuse the Maillard reaction with caramelization. They're similar in that both happen when you apply heat, but they're not the same. Caramelization is the browning of sugars alone. Think of melted sugar turning into caramel or the golden color on top of creme brulee. The Maillard reaction, on the other hand, requires both sugars and proteins. That's why it's responsible for the browning of bread, meats, roasted nuts, and coffee beans. So while caramelization gives sweetness and a toffee-like flavor, the Maillard reaction brings in savory, nutty, roasted, and meaty flavors. Together, they're the dynamic duo of delicious cooking. The Maillard reaction isn't just a chemistry experiment. It's happening every time you cook. Picture a burger sizzling on a hot pan. The outside develops a deep brown crust, locking in flavor, while the inside stays juicy. That crust is pure Maillard magic. Or think about fresh toast. Bread on its own has a mild, slightly sweet flavor. But as soon as it hits the toaster, the surface browns, aromas fill the kitchen, and suddenly it smells irresistible. That transformation is the Maillard reaction working in real time. It's the same with baked goods, roasted coffee, fried dumplings, grilled vegetables, the list goes on. Without this reaction, our food would be dull and flat. With it, cooking becomes a full sensory experience. Let's dive a little deeper without getting lost in the weeds. When heat is applied, amino acids and sugars interact and rearrange themselves into hundreds of different compounds. Some of these new compounds create flavor, others create aroma, and still others contribute to the golden brown color we see on the surface of cooked foods. For example, when you sear a steak, those surface molecules break down and recombine to produce flavors described as roasted, nutty, or even a little sweet. If you've ever noticed that brown food smells different from how it tastes, that's because aroma molecules travel differently than flavor molecules, giving us a layered sensory experience. So in essence, heat sets off a chain reaction between sugar and protein, and the result is a symphony of taste and smell. Here's the key. The Maillard reaction needs high enough heat to get going. Generally, it kicks in at around 280 degrees Fahrenheit, 140 degrees Celsius, and becomes even more intense as the temperature rises. That's why boiling food in water, where the maximum temperature is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, won't trigger much browning. Instead, you need dry heat, roasting, baking, frying, or grilling. This is also why chefs stress the importance of preheating pans or ovens. 
If your pan isn't hot enough when you add that piece of meat, it'll release water, steam up, and you'll end up with a gray boiled surface instead of a beautifully browned crust. Water is the biggest obstacle to the Maillard reaction. Foods with too much moisture won't brown properly because water keeps the temperature from climbing high enough. That's why patting your steak dry before searing or letting veggies roast in a hot oven instead of steaming makes such a difference. But moisture isn't always the enemy. A little bit can help create the right texture. For example, steam and baking helps bread rise before the crust hardens and browns. Once the steam escapes, the Maillard reaction kicks in, giving you that perfect golden crust. One of the coolest things about the Maillard reaction is that it never creates the exact same result twice. The flavors depend on what kinds of amino acids and sugars are present in the food. Take onions, for instance. When sautéed, they develop sweet, caramel-like notes. Meat, on the other hand, produces savory, umami-rich flavors. Coffee beans generate a completely different set of compounds that give that roasted, slightly bitter profile. This diversity is why the Maillard reaction gives us such a wide range of delicious experiences from one process. It's like a single instrument playing infinite songs depending on the sheet music. Professional chefs are masters at controlling the Maillard reaction. They know exactly how to manipulate heat, time, and moisture to get the perfect result. For instance, when searing meat, chefs often use cast iron pans because they retain heat so well. They also avoid overcrowding the pan to prevent steaming. In baking, they'll carefully adjust sugar and protein levels to encourage the right kind of browning and flavor development. Even coffee roasters spend years perfecting their roasting profiles to maximize flavor through the Maillard process. It's science meeting artistry in the kitchen. The Maillard reaction is more than just a scientific curiosity. It's the heartbeat of cooking. It's what makes bread smell inviting, meat taste savory, coffee rich, and cookies irresistible. Every time you enjoy a browned, flavorful bite, you're tasting chemistry at work. So the next time you're in the kitchen, pay attention to that sizzle, that browning, that aroma filling the air. Behind it all is a reaction discovered over a century ago, yet it continues to bring joy to every meal we cook today. Cooking is science, but it's also magic, and the Maillard reaction is proof of both. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.